Hello, welcome to our program. I'm Dr. Lewis Hassel, coming to you from the campus of the University of Oklahoma Health Sciences Center. And our program, Digital Sign Out and Slide Review, is part of the Digital Anatomic Pathology Academy, uh, which is a joint venture between the Digital Pathology Association and PATH Presenter. Our case today is, uh, I think, an instructive case uh, dealing with um, how to approach soft tissue lesions. It's not particularly a common case, and in fact, it was a great challenge for us. Uh, the individual was a uh, um, middle-aged man who had uh, first developed on his thorax um, a soft tissue mass in the deep subcutis and uh, subcutaneous tissue. Uh, this was biopsied and was found to be a, a spindle cell uh, neoplasm, somewhat epithelioid appearing, um, and having some uh, vascular markers. Uh, so that led to an initial working diagnosis of uh, epithelioid hemangioendothelioma, uh, which is about the point in time at which it came to my attention. Uh, so this illustrates, uh, I think, some of the ways that we approach soft tissue tumors. We have to first look very carefully at the H&E morphology. That has to be our guide and to, to govern the uh, subsequent workup and evaluation. We then can, of course, apply histochemical uh, means as well as immunohistochemistry. Uh, but very often in soft tissue tumors, these are not particularly revealing uh, in terms of a specific diagnosis. Although now we are developing more uh, specific markers that can be indicative of uh, uh, both lineage and sometimes uh, molecular genetic manifestations. Uh, so that's a, a hopeful trend for the future. Uh, but very often we get to that stage of having a name or a classification based on morphology, um, and it may not be very specific. Uh, so the question arises as to whether or not uh, to apply some of the more advanced tools that we have in terms of uh, uh, in situ hybridization, PCR, next generation sequencing, and so forth. And these, of course, can rapidly increase the cost and certainly are not uh, universally available. Um, we have to remember here that our goal is to guide therapy uh, and that uh, while uh, signing a specific name uh, can be very comforting and so forth, um, if the means to treat uh, isn't going to be changed, then uh, that uh, added cost may not be helpful. On the other hand, discovery of a uh, molecular marker, molecular pathway involved, may in fact often lead to a more specific and uh, helpful uh, treatment that uh, may influence the patient's outcome. So with those things in mind, remembering what our goal is and the various tools that we have uh, to work with, I think we can oftentimes make uh, good choices, but we're still learning how to do this well. So uh, when should we consider uh, in situ hybridization with uh, either fluorescence or other me mechanisms? Well, I think this is most useful when our diagnostic uh, considerations are limited. When we have a relatively small range of uh, differential considerations uh, and where we're thinking that uh, that is going to be uh, uh, readily resolved by that uh, uh, particular test. Uh, this usually is the case where we're dealing with a fusion gene uh, with usually uh, maybe uh, multiple uh, partners, but usually a single uh, dominant uh, partner uh, to which other uh, genes may fuse. Uh, likewise, if uh, gene amplification or deletion is a possible cause, then fish can also be uh, very readily uh, diagnostic. And these are some of the tumors where this uh, comes into play. Uh, Ewing's, Ewing's likes tumors, the CIC rearranged tumors, Mixoid liposarc, mixoid chondrosarc, a desmoplastic small round cell tumor, uh, and some of these other tumors uh, are individuals, individual situations where uh, this uh, can be of uh, use. So uh, as we uh, go forward into the case, let's take a look at the digital slide. Uh, here's our case. And uh, uh, as you can see, this is a, a sort of deep soft tissue fascial tumor. We have some skeletal muscle down here, some fat up here. And you can see we have a nodular uh, pattern of growth with some peripheral uh, uh, extension. 
a little bit of uh, fibrous banding or uh, tissue in between these nodules. And as it looks like as we come into higher magnification, we have a, a fair bit of streaming in these uh, cell clusters with lots of uh, small clear spaces. Uh, and some of these uh, have a little bit of uh, red cells uh, within them, uh, although that's not a uniform uh, feature in this lesion. And we can see, in fact, small arcuate uh, vessels in and around areas of this. Uh, the nuclei here are uh, fairly atypical, not highly pleomorphic, uh, but certainly mitotically active, prominent nucleoli in many of them. Um, no necrosis is identified, um, and we can find mitotic figures, in our case, uh, fairly uh, frequently. Additionally, we can look at the periphery, and we'll notice that uh, this lesion has uh, somewhat of a uh, uh, perithelial uh, pattern, if you will. It sort of has this sense of growing around in a nest and so forth. Uh, we can see here that there's uh, uh, some intravascular extension or involvement of these areas here. Um, and other areas up here, we can see uh, more clear-cut uh, lymphovascular space involvement, such as we see here uh, in this uh, pattern. And it's always growing in these sort of nested, budded fashions. Here we see some almost multinucleate type cells. And you see here, there's a little endothelial lining over some of this. So it has this subendothelial pattern of uh, intravascular extension. <clears throat> so over the course of time, we did a number of immunohistochemical evaluations on this uh, lesion, as well as some histochemical tests. Uh, the reticulin was not particularly uh, remarkable for showing individual pericellular uh, uh, tumor. Uh, or uh, uh, reticulin, but rather showed some groupings and nesting of the of the tumor. The tumor was beta catenin positive, and uh, of significance, it was positive with both uh, CD34 diffusely as well as with CD31, uh, particularly in these uh, small vascular spaces, uh, and factor eight. Um, so we thought perhaps this might be a uh, vascular tumor. Uh, and so with that in mind, we thought to look for uh, a more specific uh, marker that might give us a clue in terms of whether it might be an epithelioid hemangioendothelioma. So we sent it for a uh, CAMTA-1 uh, fish evaluation. Uh, and in fact, this uh, turned out to be negative. But uh, although we did two, two different marks, we also looked for YAP-1. Uh, we were looking for those, thinking that these might be positive in epithelioid hemangioendothelioma, which was the name that this had sort of been suggested uh, by the morphology and the appearance and so forth. Uh, it, it didn't turn out to have either of those uh, translocations. But we did discover through that FISH evaluation that we had copy number gains of both TFE3 and YAP1. Uh, so that didn't make a specific diagnosis, uh, but it did lead us to do some further investigation and consultation. Uh, that uh, led us to discover that, in fact, this uh, patient had a, a UBT, uh, uh, UBT1 GLI1 um, fusion. Um, so uh, this brought up the consideration of the GLI1 altered epithelioid soft tissue tumors that have been fairly recently described. Um, now, interestingly, these uh, tend to have multinodular growth, somewhat nested ar architecture, the arborizing vascular network that we saw with our case, but they tend to be rather monotonous and have very oval nu nuclei, clear cytoplasm with uh, vacuoles, uh, intravascular uh, protrusion and so forth, peri-endothelial peri uh, growth pattern. Uh, and tend to be uh, predominantly found in the uh, head and neck, uh, especially the tongue, uh, but can be found in extremities, bones, and, and other sites. Now, these tumors are often positive with S100, which ours was not, with CD56, which ours was not. Uh, I don't believe we tested it with SMA. Um, um, but because uh, multiple genes can be uh, exaggerated or amplified with this, you can also see uh, STAT6 and MDM2, as well as CDK4 in these uh, lesions. 
So um, in our particular case, uh, the fusion partner was very different than what is usually described. But let's look at what's been published about these. This is a rather nice review from uh, Binsu and his colleagues um, from the American Journal of Surge Path. And here you can see these uh, relatively bland, uh, monotonous uh, tumor cells uh, with CDK4, MDM2, and S100 positivity, and this nice intravascular growth. Uh, and there are a series of, uh, you know, 30 or so uh, cases. However, they also had some atypical morphologies, which included some spindle cell ver versions, uh, areas of uh, clear clearing of the cytoplasm, sort of corded and nested pattern with some myxoid changes, occasional fibrous bands, not unlike what we had in our case, and even areas with sort of hyaline cords, uh, as you can see here in this uh, lower right image. Uh, so the morphologic spectrum would be compatible with what we have seen, but the behavior was quite different. Um, in fact, most of these tumors had a relatively indolent behavior, uh, readily uh, uh, cured with uh, complete excision, with no recurrences and relatively few deaths. Uh, in our case, uh, the fusion partner was something completely different from what had been previously described. Uh, these four or three genes uh, most frequently encountered. Uh, but of note, some of them had co-amplification of other adjacent genes because of these uh, fusion partners. Now, uh, our case is uh, also behaving in a more aggressive fashion. And in fact, since the initial biopsies and the first recurrences, the patient has gone on to develop um, met metastatic disease involving the liver, possibly also the bones, uh, and may not uh, survive very much longer. Uh, so uh, this is an evolving area of understanding these uh, uh, GLI-1 rearranged tumors uh, that bear some watching. Um, and certainly uh, some further investigation. But I think the thing that's important to take away from this is that a uh, tiered evaluation of your uh, case using your at hand tools, followed by uh, selective fish, and then if need be, uh, next gen sequencing or PCR testing uh, can give you uh, some additional information and provide insight into a potentially previously not. Uh, recognized uh, malignant variant of these uh, GLI-1 uh, rearranged tumors. So uh, with that, uh, we'll bring this to a close. Thank you so much for joining me for this uh, discussion and evaluation. I hope it's been instructed, instructive for you. Uh, the slides will be available for you to review on your own uh, as you uh, like with the link in the uh, description. And until next time, we thank you so much for joining us and hope that you'll Hit that subscribe button so you'll catch uh, future releases from our channel.